Hey, it's Errol. I'm a poet, one that just happens to write in a forest. In 2015, I stepped into a very special collection of trees at the Billy Graham Library right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. While there, I did nothing but write. But I always believed that they weren't my words. They were the lyrics from Billy's Forest. Nearly two years later, God spoke directly into my heart. He said it was time to grow beyond the library, to write within other collections of trees, mainly my own forest right here in South Charlotte, North Carolina. You see, in every place that I have written, the spirit of Billy's lyrics vibrate the purpose and plan that God has put into play. I never know what I'm going to write about when I step into any forest, which gives us plenty of time to talk about it at the end. These are not my words. These are the lyrics from Billy's Forest. Chapter number 139, January 4th, 2019. We all joke around about how swiftly time is moving. One minute it's 1978, then suddenly we're right here in 2019. What would it be like if our insides were like a tree? You know, rings. Would some be wider than others? During slower times, would they be paper thin? The mystery of it all is the fact that there really isn't a mystery. We want to be placed inside endless amounts of very happy times, and yet we feel as if we're just sitting here watching a tree grow very, very slow. Well, where do we go? Not all trees grow straight up. They glide to the right, they glide to the left, they dive bomb vines that squeeze them too tight. They break in the wind, and trees sometimes look like they have no friends. They're just neighbors, trying to latch onto more light than the others. All on its own, nice and slow. Wow. And that's how I describe what it must be like to be a tree standing there with its roots deep into the soil. If you cut it, you can count the rings. Now, they say that's how you can tell the age of a tree. I guess I have to believe it. But what about humans when they share their stories? Their rings are their memories or their experiences. I guess we have to believe it because they're sharing it. What is it that we are projecting forward that keeps people away or invites too many that want to play? What is the energy that is coming from our core soul, the trunk of our body, that invites us into areas that makes time move faster than anything on this planet? The Russians recently announced that they've got this bomb that's going to move, what, four or five times faster than the speed of sound? I think time itself is moving that fast because all of a sudden it's going to be 2025 if we're lucky enough to get there. What do you do to slow down the hands of time? I'm going to share what I do, and you're just going to think I'm a freak. But we already know that, right? I love to look for boredom. I love to stop what I'm doing, go sit on the sofa, and stare at an empty wall. I love locating boredom. Not read a book, not watch TV, just to stare out into the forest or to stare at a blank, empty wall. Now, I've added to this, I've taken on a job at a movie theater where you get usually three huge crowds at the concession stand. Now, I'm there for a reason. That little space in between when movies, they're already filled up in the theater, and you're waiting for the next crowd to come in. There's usually like about an hour and a half there, maybe two hours. And it's really slow. And you've got to be able to sit inside that boredom. What are you going to do with it? Well, what I like to do is I like to clean. I like to invest my mind, body, and soul into the building so that I can appreciate that moment where I've escaped the world. People are running away to go watch movies. I'm running away to go watch people watch movies. Looking for little things that slow down the hands of time instead of finding those fun things to do all the time because it's over with that fast. And how much did it cost you? But going into an area of your life that really does feel slow will help your mind, body, and soul regrip what it is that you want to do in your life. I want to do stupid jobs. I want to be able to do things that are just so darn boring, but yet it affects people. When there are people involved, people come to a Taco Bell, people go to a grocery store. I want to be somebody who just sweeps the floor at the grocery store. It's tedious, but you know, I get to watch people escape their world. I'm escaping to watch them. And as as weird as it sounds, it allows you to study the habits of so many people around you so that you can really take the time to respect somebody other than yourself, to help somebody find that can of soup. To, to Somebody comes up to the to the concession stand at the movie theater and, and, and they, they complain about the popcorn. I, I get it. It, it. It's expensive. But they know that the scent of the popcorn is creating a happy place for them. 
And what you do is you allow them to enjoy that scent by talking with them and not at them. And it usually will be a small bucket of popcorn. And I can say, hey, look, free refills. Allowing people to be themselves in a world they're escaping to helps you escape from the world that you're running from. Not, not, not because you want to get away from it. You just want to appreciate the time. Make the investment in something and time will slow down. I mean, because really, the only reason why it's racing by us is because we're allowing time to do exactly that. We are crowding up our days with everything, including those darn smartphones, looking at information that we're never going to use, and time is just racing away. But when you make that investment into serving other people, time has a way of slowing down. I'm Errol. These are not my words. These are the lyrics from Billy's Forest.